It is so great chatting with my next guest. This is long overdue for anybody who's been following uh, the interviews Jared Brooks and I have been doing together for a while, and he's coming off a big win. What better timing than to talk to him now? Jared Brooks here on the program. Jared, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm good, brother. It's an honor to be on your show again. We're going to be uh, making fireworks here soon. Yes, uh, we're, we're excited about what's next. Uh, first, though, let's talk about that last fight. Could that have gone any better? Um, yeah, I could have done a little bit better hand fighting. Could have, you know, there's always something to, to work on after your fights. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't get a scratch or I didn't get hit. So I came out healthy and that's all that matters. Um, just preparing for this next fight. Did, uh, did, was there anything about uh, your last opponent that surprised you at all that maybe you weren't expecting? Oh, he's super strong. Uh, he closed and maintained distance really, really fast. So it was a uh, it was a little difficult, like getting a hold of him at first. But after he uh, he slipped up once, then I took advantage of it. And what was the feedback after that win? Because again, uh, we know how good you are, but you know, just to see like you again going out there getting a finish, like did you find that it was a little bit better than maybe some of the other fights just because it was so quick? Um, it doesn't really matter to me, man. I'm just <laughs> I'm here for the show, and I'm just there for the promotion and and to do my job. So at the end of the day, it's up to to people to to really see and and look in detail of, of how people fight. But at the end of the day, I don't really mind. And, uh, it's a third fight. uh, Those are your third fight for one championship. How is it compared to some of the other promotions you fought for? Cause it, you know, with your weight class, it seems like there's just way more respect across the board, not even from fans, but the promotion itself. Yeah. Um, they make sure they, the way their commentators work, everybody that runs the promotion, they, you know, put a spotlight on, on the littler guys. So, yeah, I'm super blessed to be part of that promotion, and they uh, they put me on as much as possible, like uh, which they do with they would do with every athlete if they put themselves out there. But um, luckily, I, I put myself out there enough to where you know one really wants to push me. That next the next fight I should mention we were talking about it off the top there. Uh, just how excited are you? Uh, what 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 uh, what's camp going to look like? Sort of leading into it. I'm just going to be going to the grindstone as hard as possible, getting ready for five rounds and um, showing the people that. I can be the best in the world, no matter what. Um, I've, I've had a little redemption in, in the way that things went. It's, it's worked perfectly to my favor. So um, luckily, the Lord keeps on blessing me. For sure. Um, and, and do you just, are you one of those guys that, you know, hey, if it's not broken, don't try and fix it. Like, keep everything the same, routine, training camp, all that, if, if you continue to win like this? Um, it's just depending on my opponent and how they fight. I think that, you know, you have to transform yourself into the fighter that beats that opponent. If you're the same uh, same person every time, then, you know, opponents start to see you, you know. It's good to study your, your own game and your opponent's game and kind of mend it together. And I know you're a student of the game. That's why I love talking to you. Uh, style-wise, how are you looking at your next fight? How, how do you feel like you match up against your opponent? He's a Wushu world champion, so um, he's super dangerous on the feet. Uh, he has a lot of great qualities, but um, he hasn't felt any kind of pressure that I can bring on to him. And uh, the pressure is going to be a little bit too overwhelming. I'm going to get into his psyche. I'm going to get into his body. So um, that's all that matters at the end of the day. And, you know, you just got to go out and, and do what to do when the time comes. In terms of the camp, uh, how do you structure things like is there like is, you know, I know you do like peaks and valleys, so to speak. Um, how, how, how is camp sort of looking into this fight uh, as far as uh, what you have planned? Um, right now it's kind of short notice. So we're just trying to, trying to gather up all of our stuff right now, get, uh, lifting out of the way, you know, and then sprints, stuff like that. And then we, uh, go straight to jujitsu practices with some of the best jujitsu, you know, world champions in Michigan. Then, um, I work with Johnny Glover, uh, for my boxing coach. Uh, I work with, uh, James, Justin Scoggins. He lives here now. So we're just getting a plethora of training partners and, and people to, to really get me ready for this fight. Is travel and all that booked already? Like, do you know when you'll be heading down there and everything? Um, the way I see it, I'm trying to get everything set up to where I'm, I'm trying to get on Singaporean time, you know, like at least a week before I leave stuff like that. So just trying to, trying to get ready and, just trying to push myself into into a good direction into being a world champ. And who's going to be making the trip down there with you? Do you know who will be uh, cornering you and all that? Um, I'm pretty sure my dad and James Lee. Uh, oh, cool. I always want my dad because my dad is really never in my corner. So um, having him there to see me win a world championship will be huge. And James, he's always there as my piece. He always keeps me calm and collected and 
just ready to go. How do you envision the fight playing out? Um, I think that I can submit him on the ground, and if if he if he gets up to his feet, then I'm willing to trade with Joshua. I know that my power is is equal. Um, he is super sneaky, but I have Scoggins with me, and he, that guy can kick the end of your head, and you won't even know it. So um, I'm not looking over Joshua Pasiao. I know that he's a student of the game as well, but there's levels to this, and I know that he's been world champ, but there's still levels to it. And not looking past this fight, but any idea who could fight the winner of this fight? I, I don't know if you look that far ahead, or is it just the zone in on, on the opponent? That's it. Um, they're probably going to want to win a title reshot, you know, mm-hmm. after ever beat Josh. So we're probably going to fight again. And then after that, uh, we'll see where it goes. There's plenty of uh, plenty of 125 pounders out there that are just A+. plus. Yeah, absolutely. What is your current contract status for them? It seems like it's something long term uh, by, by the sounds of it, right? Um, we, well, I'm just about to have a meeting right now. So, oh, really? Well, yeah. <laughs> hope all goes well. There you go. I <laughs> imagine so. If, uh, you know, you got this big fight coming up, right? So, yeah. So, um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And, um, as of right now, I'm in a six fight contract. Uh, hopefully we extend it. One is the best promotion that I've been in period. Yeah. The way that they treat fighters and the way that, uh, that it's ran and structured and everybody's just super cool and easy to get along with. Well, and your value, that was always the thing, and not to throw shade at them, because, you know, but but the, I don't think the UFC ever really, they, they never gave you the respect you deserve. How nice is it to, you know, now you put in all this work, you've been getting all these impressive wins, and to get that respect back, it just seemed like you never had that when you are in the UFC. Yeah, the UFC, I mean, you know, your average fan, they go upon the fan base and stuff like that, but you gotta, you gotta make fans of the 125 pounders. You gotta make the people believe in them, and it isn't just them fighting either, because they're gonna be still thinking, oh, these guys are only 125. You know, mm-hmm. but when they structure it and the way they commentate it and the way that, the, you know, it, all of that goes together, it, it really defines our weight classes. What do you make of Demi- uh, Davis and Figueroa uh, being the champion right now, a guy that a lot of people felt like you beat? Um, you know, Davison is is doing what he's doing right now. And uh, hats off to him for, you know, sticking in there and um, and being a world champ. But uh, there's always that thing in the back of my head that I, I really like to fight Davison in, in, the, in the future, if we could cross promotion kind of thing. Um, I think that 125, especially with us going to Amazon Prime now, I think that 125 is going to be a, a pretty good division to watch. And yep. uh, we have plenty, plenty of exciting people that are different types of martial artists. Yeah, I saw that today and, and available in Canada, which is good for me, Jared. So I'll be able to watch yeah. too, which is great. Uh, just as, yeah. uh, just as awesome. Um, I, I got I got to mention this because I posted this the other day. So uh, Brandon Royville, I interviewed him and just out of nowhere, he starts throwing some shade at Askar Askarov and you uh, you sort of threw some shade at him. Uh, is there something there with you and Brandon or you just felt like he was kind of being out of the line? Um, you know, I, I've fought plenty of fighters like Brandon and he thinks that he's, I mean, he's he's exciting, but when you... When the people that you face against, I guess, you know what I'm saying? But I think that Askar, Askarov is a A plus fighter. He's really, really good. I mean, he just had a long layoff, but I think that Askar could tap him out in the the first round, even though that Brandon's, you know, like really, really uh, thin and, you know, Mr. uh, What do you, what's that, Mr. Elastic or what's that old doll that they used to use? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, you're asking the Stretch wrong guy. Stretch Armstrong. Oh, Stretch Armstrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stretch Armstrong. Yeah, he's like that. But um, I feel like people like that have, have weak chins, and mm-hmm. they can get rocked pretty easily and have a short career. And, you know, the way he was just, like, calling me boring, too. And I'm just like, dude, you haven't even probably watched the last few fights that I've had or anything like that or how much I've grown since then. So, um, you know, no shade to Brandon Royville. He's doing his own thing as well. But yeah, I'll fight him for sure. Do you still watch the UFC at all? Any of the flyweight fights? Oh yeah, I watch it. I've watched that whole division. I I got inspired by Figueredo and Moreno. Uh, was it the third one? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. got inspired by that. Uh, oh, right sure. before right before my fight weekend, I was like, oh okay, I I feel like I could compete against these guys. It fired me up. What do you make of uh, one of the big names that's sort of making a lot of noise? He had a great debut, uh, Mohamed Mokaev. What did you think of his win over Cody Durden? Um, you know he. I haven't really seen him go against like a a plus fighters, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I know plenty of people that beat Cody Durden. He's did done his dues. Don't get me wrong, but I know plenty of people that have tapped him out the same way. So I think that him versus Chris Johnson is a is a pretty good test. 
But I think it, it man, it's such a hard fight though for Chris Johnson. But it, if Chris stay, keeps it on the feet, he's definitely going to beat uh, Muhammad. Pretty sure it's Charles Johnson, but that's okay because I'm sure. Charles yeah, L- right LFA there. champ. Uh, we, we, I know who you're yeah, talking about or whatever. Yeah, it, it's great. And you know, it's interesting because I, I, th- I think that's that's an interesting fight because you know Charles is no pushover. Like he's been in there with some of the best on the on the regional scene. Um, I, I like I get where the UFC is coming from because they probably can't find anyone to fight Mokaev. But um, yeah, it's I, I'm excited for that fight that's coming up in July, right? So yeah, um, that is a good fight for sure. I can't wait to watch it. And uh, sorry for getting your name wrong, Charles. I don't know. It's all good. Um, and then uh, uh, t- two other uh, quick things I wanted to ask you. You mentioned Justin Scoggins. What's he up to these days? I know we haven't seen. I know he had, I think, a fight on the regional scene, but we haven't seen much of him these days. How's he doing? He was signed to a um, rising contract. So yeah. he's um, he's pretty much waiting for them to open up the country and, and get him back in. But right. uh, who knows? He might sign to a major promotion here really soon. So um, I think that his style and the way that he fights people he's a he's a fight fan favorite yeah and he's, he's just such a talent he's had i know some bad breaks it, it happens right you know little little things that happen he but the uh, best. He, he went against the best of the best man when when yeah. it comes down to it and he yeah. just got caught in some stupid stuff but yeah he, uh, he, he in my opinion is is the best uh 135 pounder right now there you go. I love it. Okay, before we go, I was curious, you know, what has it been like, you know, we talked about being with one championship. What has it been like getting this whole new fan base? Because I'm sure you're getting a ton of fans from Asia that you wouldn't have had or haven't had over the years. How has that been just being this sort of worldwide uh, figure? Oh, it's really, really great. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm where the numbers were. I would like, you know, for my fan base to be, you know, I would like my fan base to be bigger. But um, I just take work hard determination, right? So, yeah. um yeah, it's, it's amazing. I'm super blessed with the fans that I have right now, and uh, they're growing for sure. So uh, one is giving me nothing but the best platforms to, to be myself on. So, super That's fun. good. And you've given me nothing but the best interviews, Jared. Good talking to you. Next time we'll do it a bit sooner in between there, man. It's, uh, it's always good talking to you, dude. Just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media, and if you've got any sponsors or shout-outs, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, um, just go to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter under the underscore monkey god. Um, and yeah, just hit me up. I'll follow y'all back uh, if I like it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, so yeah, thank you um, to you know the people that have helped me this far in my career. And we'll see where it goes from there, man. I can't wait to see what the future uh, holds for us.